What's going on guys, Phil here from Phil's Craft Corner. Welcome back to another Workshop Wednesday. Today we are actually doing some work in a workshop because I have some work to do in the workshop. Uh, surprise, yeah. Uh, we're doing these tables and chairs. Uh, we're restoring these. These were just left out in the garden. Uh, as you can see, the weather's got to him and it's just all not very nice. Uh, so we're replacing this fabric with these ones are uh, painting all the frame in white. Same with these chairs. These are a lot worse off. So as you can see, these ones are a lot worse than those ones. That one's pretty knackered. But we're going to take all the fabric off. We're going to um, buff all these back to pretty much bare metal or at least the undercoat. And then we're going to recoat it with some all coat. And then uh, it should look pretty new and shiny and good. We'll get set up, we'll get started, I'm going to cut all the fabric off first and then we're going to use a wire wheel thing that I picked up today. It's supposed to be really good for this, removing rust and removing flaky paint, things like that, leaving a good smooth surface ready to paint. Alright guys, so we're just going to do this chair uh, as an example and then I'll do the other ones off camera because there's no point in you watching me do all four of them that are pretty much exactly the same. Uh, what we need to do and get this on the camera for you is these clips here pulled this off last night just uh, to see what the deal was uh, and have a look and inside there you've got a plastic uh, rod which goes down through and then the fa fa fabric wraps around that and because of the shape of the rod it can't get pulled through there so I need to cut this and to make it easier I'm just going to cut this right down the middle there near the edge uh, with sharp blade, I've got my Magnuson blade. This thing's really comfortable to use in your hand. Uh, quite cheap from Screwfix, so I'll put a link down below for that one. Um, it's really good. It's not a normal like Stanley blade. It doesn't retract. You have to undo the screw. It flips out. You got storage for a couple in there. I just got a couple old blades in it for now because there's no point in using a brand new blade for this. And then you tighten it up and it's really comfortable. So you pop them off. Uh, I'm going to slice all the way down on all of them. And then I'm going to slide the rod off. It also has these little clips at the bottom here. Which they just pop off. Just like that. Uh, I think they just help with holding the fabric. I'm not too sure. Uh, these ones have got... Um, the Jack and Jill haven't, so I'll just put them back on at the end anyway. Maybe we'll see how it is and if it's strong enough and if it looks all right because these are going white and bright blue, like royal blue. Uh, so it might not look very nice with it. So let's see what happens anyway. So I'll pop all these clips off and then we'll slice it and try and slide out this fabric and. Hopefully, it isn't too bad. Right, so that's all the clips off. It's time to slice into this and then hopefully slide these out. Right, so there seems to be a bit of a plastic rod at the bottom and runs all the way up but that just stops just shy of the top. So I'm going to have to cut this right down there and take that rod back out. Maybe. I'm going to push it out of the bottom. Oh no, wait, maybe we can get it out. There we go. So this and it's plastic. Um, this runs inside the track. Like so. 
and the fabric wraps around that. And the reason it does that is so that it doesn't do this, uh, especially when the fabric's on. The profile of this bar will stop the fabric coming out and that will help get the tension of the fabric to make it safe to sit on. Made this very difficult for myself now. Right, don't do that. That makes your life difficult. any of these to be broken halfway down. There we go. So that's one chair stripped, ready to be buffed down and start to re repaint again. And wasn't too bad actually. Uh, about five minutes so let's get the other four done and Alright guys, so that is the chairs and the Jack and Jill all stripped out, ready to be sanded back and have their first coat of paint put on. Uh, it wasn't too bad, it took me about 20 minutes and quite a lot of effort. Uh, two of these strips kind of broke, so I need to figure out what I can do with those. All the clips and stuff are on there. I'm going to take them and put them in some strong degreaser to try and get all the rust and the bits of dirt and debris off the clips so they can pop in nicely and look pretty new. So let me grab the abrasive pad and show you what I'm going to be doing with that and how I'm going to be sanding these back without causing too much damage. Alright guys, so this is the kit that I'm going to be using. Uh, it is this uh, 100 millimeter surface preparation cup wheel with arbor and you've got basically um, just some safety instructions there and it doesn't give you any assembly instructions because all you get in it is that and that and if you can't put that together then you're probably not educated enough to actually use the thing safely it's got a reverse thread on there push this through, that's super tight, and then you put your grip bit on the top, and then twist it a little bit to get it pushed right in there, when you tighten the bolt down it'll go there, so if you turn it to the right you usually it tighten up, so like I say it's reverse threaded, that helps it stop coming undone when you're actually using it. So I'll get a screwdriver for this side and a spanner for that side and we'll proper tighten it down. Just use my screwdriver and pliers. And we'll tighten it up properly. Opposite, remember. There we go, then you just stick it in a drill and you're good to go. So I'm just using my small DeWalt at the minute because it'll be lighter that way, it won't weigh as much. I mean it's only a 2 amp hour battery which is there so it might run low at some point and I might have to switch over to my bigger one which I've got spare batteries for while I'm waiting for this to charge up or I don't know, it depends how quick it goes. So. Let's go over to the chairs and we'll give it a whirl. Alright guys, so we're over at the chairs. I've got my attachment. I've got a dust mask on just in case this does throw up any dust. And uh, let's see what happens. I'm just going to take a little bit off the top here just to see if we can get this nice and smooth. Um, it seems really abrasive and really solid. It's kind of like they've got a sponge and they've dipped it into the stuff that, into the abrasive 
bit that they put on the front of sandpaper so uh, it feels like 60 or 40 grit so uh, let's see how it goes I can imagine it going fairly soft pretty quickly after I start using it but uh, there's loads of great reviews on it so let's see I'm not too sure, it's still fairly rough, um, but we'll go over the whole thing and we'll see how it turns out. I'm thinking I might be better just hand sanding this with a bit of 400 wet and dry, but let's see. duty grime remover because what I'm going to do first I'm going to clean all the moss and whatever rust I can get off there with the grime remover um, because sandpaper doesn't do it's just going to get gunked up with all the moss and stuff like that uh, that abrasive wheel was supposed to take everything off from what the, the reviews and stuff that I was reading but like I say it's, it's not going to work well for me in this application it'll probably work well in other places but just not for me here so I'm going to give it all a quick wipe down with it and then we'll come back with a sandpaper and we'll give it all a quick wet sand. that lovely green algae water uh, I'm gonna throw the caps in here to leave them for about half an hour and let that degreaser work away on that but these don't look too bad um, there's a few spots of rust there's a few spots of rust like spot rust there that is knocking down the rest of it it looks in pretty decent condition uh, these chairs they already look nice and white there's a few little spots there like, uh, a bit of rust up here like I say um, just a 400 grit 
wet and dry. I've just finished this off nicely, ready for the paint. Uh, the paint I'm using is uh, Zinza All Coat. So it paints plastic, metal, tiles, bricks, everything that sticks to all surfaces anyway. But I'd like to have a nice smooth surface to start with because I'm going to be spraying these. I'm not going around with a paintbrush and painting every little tiny bit of these. I'm going to be spraying them with my HVLP. We'll get a nice even coat on there. So I'm going to drop the things into soak. I'm going to come back with some wet and dry and start sanding down. All right, guys, so I've got my 400 grit wet and dry paper. I just rip it into sizes like this. I've got a bucket of warm soapy water. I tend to use soapy water anyway because it helps clear off the sandpaper as you're using it. Um, using wet sandpaper, it lasts longer and it's better for the material anyway. It leaves a smoother finish because uh, the water acts as a little bit of lubricant. stops you taking that a little bit too much off. So uh, I'm going to go around, I'm going to get all the spots of this that are quite bad and then uh, we're ready for painting. Right, so that's this one done. I'm going to get the other two chairs done and then we'll come back and give everything a quick wipe down just to get rid of all these bits of dirty rust marks that I've put on there. That, look, that bit of rust there is now smooth. The bit that was on here it was quite bad, that's now smooth and it should be covered quite nicely with the paint now. I've left these plastic clips on here because um, I'm going to risk breaking and trying to take them off because they're quite brittle. The plastic that was running through these were quite brittle as well. So uh, I'm just going to paint over them because this paint does cover plastic as well. We'll leave them on and we'll get the other ones sanded and get ready for painting. Alright guys, so all the chairs are sanded and cleaned, ready for painting. Uh, this is where they're going to be painted. Uh, I don't mind getting paint on the floor, obviously, because just the floor, I've covered up the bits that I don't want to get painted. That's all scrap, so I need to break that down anyway. The tables are already covered in paint, so the only thing I needed to cover up was the bits that were there. Uh, I've cleaned all the sawdust off the floor, so when I'm spraying it's not going to come back and get onto the chairs, because that would leave a really bad finish, and we don't want that, because we'd have to go all the way back to the beginning, sand it back again, and start again, and yeah, definitely don't want to be doing that. So I'm going to start mixing the paint down, ready to go through the spray gun, and I'll show you how I do that. Alright guys, so this is the paint that I'm going to be using. This is Zinza All Coat Exterior Satin. Uh, it says, designed for long term decoration of timber, metal, masonry, plastic, concrete and cladding. Self priming, no sanding required, contains a biocide to protect the dried coating against fung fungal degradation. Fast three coat time, one hour. Uh, it's clean in warm soapy water, so I can use water to water this down. Uh, so it'll go through my HVLP. Uh, depending on how thick it is, it might already be thin enough to go through, but I doubt it because it's a metal paint. So uh, let's just see. Uh, obviously, this is a brand new tin, so I'm going to need to give it a good mix uh, for at least five minutes. And I'm hoping there's enough space to water it down. Um, no, I'm not sure this will actually go straight through. I've always got some pieces of MDF or something laying around from other jobs, so I always use that as a, a mixer. It might actually go through, to be fair. Uh, it might only need a tiny little bit of watering down. So we'll give it a mix. Right, guys, so I've been mixing this for five minutes now, and it's really well mixed, but... I think it needs a little bit of watering down because I can stand the stick up in there. So uh, I'm just going to get a little bit of water. I've just got a cup of water here and I'm just going to pour it in a little bit at a time. The rule of thumb is to not let it go more than 10% water and then because that starts breaking the paint down then and it, it just goes a bit runny. So 
just a little bit and we'll gently stir that in. When you're watering paint down you want to check what to clean it with and then use something similar to water it down with that. So with this it's just warm soapy water so just water uh, is probably the best thing to water it down with, um, to thin the paint down with. Uh, if you're using like um, an oil based or a solvent based then check what thinners it recommends to clean with and then give it a good mix with that. I think we'll get a decent flow through the paint gun with that so I'm going to start filling the paint gun up with some and we'll give it a test. So I don't have a proper paint gun stand so I just use whatever I've got around to help me. Uh, this time it's just this bucket. Alright guys so I've got the compressor hooked up, I've got my regulator here set to just over 3 bar which it says on here maximum of 3 bar 43. Um, this generally gives me a good setting for it as you can see at the top this is where I do a lot of my test sprays just on this scrap piece at the back so um, I'm going to go for a test spray on there again and I'll check the flow and how it goes so generally you want this set fairly low at first and then gradually build it up from there Really wide, right? Right, so that's not flowing too great. We're going to have to water it down a little bit more. Uh, it's, it's just spattering out, and if you get that, then your paint's too thick. So I'm going to water it down, we're going to come back, and uh, we'll make sure we've got the right consistency. Alright, guys, so I went for my lunch and I cleaned out the spray gun completely um, because I didn't want it drying anywhere in any of the metal parts because this is actually designed as a metal paint and it'll probably be a bit of a pain to get it off uh, so now I've come back and I've refilled it with the same mixture as I had before this is spraying absolutely perfectly uh, I've had to turn the amount that's coming out right down because it's coming out that well and yeah uh, I'll show you so I'm getting a nice even spray now whereas before it was a bit spattery uh, so we'll get a lot more even coat so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these this one first uh, I'm going to start going through it because there's no point in you watching me go through all of the painting and spraying of the chairs because it's going to be a little bit boring so I'm just going to quickly go over this one and we'll see how it looks after the first coat uh, the first coat acts as a primer so it will need a second coat after this uh, so hopefully it goes on nice and smooth and nice and evenly so let's see I always suggest wearing a face mask with these things Alright guys, so that's the first coat on this side done. Uh, I need to let this dry and I'll flip it over and do the bottom and do the coat on the bottom. But this has turned out really nice. Like, oh, we caught on the other chairs. So the coverage is really good. I'm actually really happy with that. Uh, there's a couple of bits where it went on a little bit thicker than I wanted. But I'm not an expert sprayer, I never claim to be. Um, but it, it seems to even itself out really well. This tiny little bit there, but that'll get done on the second coat. And this is why we do two coats. Because any bits that you miss on the first coat, you will surely get on the second coat. Like, I need to do the inside of there. I'll come back and do that really quickly now. Uh, and then I will get those two done. 
they shouldn't be as bad because they're already white we'll get them done and they'll look really nice and new and shiny and white all right guys so we are done with the paint this is a second coat of paint on these chairs and look how smooth and beautiful that paint is really impressed with this paint it's actually the first time i've used it and i'm super impressed it's gone on really well it feels really smooth when i've when it's dried um obviously i'm not going to touch this i'm just going to let that dry um i've done two coats underneath i've done a second coat on the top now uh, I've done two coats underneath this and I've just finished the second coat on top of here. This one's a bit more dry than the other one. Have a look at that, where that big rough spot was there. Nothing at all. Absolutely perfect coverage on there. And again down the side, it was harder to get into there. There's no rust there now. The both sets look absolutely brand new. Uh, I'm going to end the video there today actually because six o'clock and I don't want to be here all day getting these just waiting for paint to dry so I'll let that dry overnight so it's completely dry in the morning I'll come back I'll check out how it is and then we will work on getting the fabric on there so I will split this into two parts we'll have this as part one of the chairs being restored and part two we'll do the fabric and I need to figure out the best way of doing it I'm not sure if I'm going to use the tracks all the way down here uh, again like it was uh, I'm thinking maybe wrap it around and then rivet it through because it'll, it'll be pretty strong that way and I can get the tension right uh, probably going to struggle getting the tension the other way I'm not too sure so if you liked this video guys then give me a thumbs up because it really makes me happy and I really appreciate it if you want to see another part of this then hit that subscribe button the next part will probably come tomorrow or at least saturday um depends on how other things go and how much time i can get to spend on this these are needed for sunday so it'll definitely be before sunday so keep your eye out for that one uh if you want to see me restore some other items then let me know down below what kind of things you would like me to restore and i'll have a look see if i can find some of them and we'll have a go at restoring them if you like this kind of video then please subscribe and keep an eye out for any of my future videos thanks for watching guys and i will see you in the next one